How do we decrease the opportunity to raise prices in this sort of predatory way? We talk a lot about corporate concentration. What we would talk about instead is just making sure that markets are regulated in a way that companies can't get away with that sort of behavior and we monitor it very closely. My name is Kaylee Thiessen. I work in the Unifor Research Department as a national representative. I think there's two things that we need to talk about in, in this conversation about inflation and affordability is that we had a era of very high inflation and the inflation is coming down dramatically, slower than we'd like, but it is coming down. And we also have an affordability crisis that actually existed before the pandemic started and before um, this inflation era started. What we saw during the pandemic is right at the very beginning when lockdowns happened, we didn't know what COVID was, uh, how it was going to affect people. Grocery stores recognized that they were essential services and they need to remain open even as other businesses were closing and people were staying home. So they decided to provide this pandemic premium uh, for workers. And then in June of 2020, all the grocery stores canceled pandemic pay at the same time. And we said, hmm, that must have been collusion, right? That they must have, they must have in some way negotiated with each other to decide when they would eliminate this pandemic pay. And there was a whole investigation uh, in, in Parliament to discuss wage fixing. And we also learned then that wage fixing wasn't a criminal offense anymore. So we all decided to go ahead and advocate that that become a criminal offense again in order to make sure that the next time there was an opportunity for wage fixing to occur, that there would be a deterrent. So what a win. <laughs> what a win that Unifor had and, and others had in making this change in public policy. So when it comes to negotiating better working conditions, stronger collective agreements, there's a number of things that that we think about. A COLA clause is a cost of living adjustment clause. It exists in a number of collective agreements in different industries. Uh, at Unifor, it's very much in the manufacturing industrial sector. What happens is if you have a COLA clause and you've negotiated one that's really strong, your wage will go up in some proportion to the rate of inflation. Now in lower wage sectors, like the grocery sector for instance, what we've negotiated in provinces where the minimum wage goes up with inflation is a minimum wage plus clause. So you would have, let's say five or six rungs on, on a wage, and you would say the wage is the minimum wage plus 50 cents, or the minimum wage is the wage plus $1.50. And that way, anytime the minimum wage goes up, which in Ontario is annually, then the, the lowest wages go up by that same amount, and that cascades all the way up. Then at the top end, you leave that to be negotiated so you can negotiate even higher increases. And that then protects workers from the worst effects of inflation on their own cost of living as well. Uh, other things that, that we think are really important are things like sectoral bargaining, which would mean negotiating at larger tables so that we can lift everyone in the sector up instead of just one workplace at a time. Uh, thinking about technological change as another example, um, technological change is happening constantly. We hear a lot about artificial intelligence right now. There's also all sorts of different types of automation and um, management by algorithm, the list goes on and on. And we could never know every single technology that might affect any worker in Canada at any moment. But making sure that collective agreements are equipped with a new technology clause that requires a new technology committee, uh, discussion with workers in both the design and the implementation of technological change means that uh, hopefully an employer is considering all the different ways that a worker will be affected and then is providing the right supports to make that change happen um, smoothly and so that workers get the best and avoid the worst of technological change. Unifor has a risk-based framework for analyzing technological change in the workplace uh, and it includes things like surveillance, which workers face uh, 
to a greater and greater extent every year and in different sectors. I think a lot about aviation. I know our members who drive truck think about surveillance and are surveilled constantly. Uh, there are health and safety implications to technological change. Uh, there are wage implications to technological change, what training is required in order to work with the technology. And we need to make sure that workers are not replaced by new technology, but that their ability to do their job well to the best of their ability is augmented or enhanced. So having a committee as a first step and then making sure that we're involved in every step of the process is an incredible way to uh, boost the power of workers to improve their job quality over time. Uh, another thing that we can do is argue for better public policy. How do we decrease the opportunity to raise prices in this sort of predatory way? We talk a lot about corporate concentration. What we would talk about instead is just making sure that markets are regulated in a way that companies can't get away with that sort of behavior and we monitor it very closely. We'd also talk about things like an excess profit tax. So any excess profits that are extracted are then delivered to uh, public public goods instead. So then we can see more money for healthcare, for example, or more money for your public library and different things like that. <laughs>